Welcome back. In the previous video, we created a procedural room actor in C++ and we gave it its own floor static mesh component, which we simply used the template map floor. And we also gave it a T sub class of variable called chair class. And in our C++ file, here's our procedural room.h, here's our chair class, here's our floor, and we created a spawn item function, which we called in begin play, passing in chair class. And all it does is it calls get world and spawns the item at 000 in the world with a 000 rotation. But what we would like to do is give this, uh, this chair a random location in the room and a random rotation, at least within some uh, reasonable um, rotation value. In other words, we don't want to mess with the pitch or the roll, we only want to mess with the rotation's yaw component. So just to really quickly get this working, we can go ahead and create a uh, f vector called location and uh, an f vector, uh, I'm sorry, an f rotator called rotation and give these for now just all zeros but actually we want to give the location x and y a random value and for the rotation we want to give its yaw a random value so let's go ahead and create these let's say let's create a float and call it x coordinate and set it equal to f math f rand range so there's this f math and it's basically a math library with all these math functions and one of them is f rand range which creates a random float within the range from min to max. So I'm going to use negative 500.f for the min and 500.f for the max and that'll give us a float between negative 500 and 500. And we can go ahead and copy this and create a y coordinate so we can change the name to y coordinate and let's give it the same exact thing, a random float value from negative 500 to 500. And we can do the same thing with our rotation value. So rotation, uh, we can give this, uh, we can call this float yaw, and we can give this a, a random value, and let's give it a random number from 0 to 360. And so this is in degrees, so it'll be from uh, 0 to 360 degrees all the way around. So for the lo location vector, for the x, we're going to pass in x coordinate instead of simply using a 0. And we're going to use y coordinate instead of simply using a 0 for the y coordinate. So for the rotation, the middle one is the yaw. We're going to use our local variable yaw for that. And instead of just passing in these temporary values, we're going to pass in location for the location parameter of spawn actor and rotation for the rotation parameter. So now our location should be random within our constraints and our rotation should also be random within our constraints. So if we go ahead and press play, you'll see now that our chair, it's no longer in the middle of the room, but it's off towards the back and it's pointed away, but it's not off the, uh, the floor. And we can go ahead and press play again and you'll see now the chair is up towards the front and again we'll see it's over here now it's closer to the middle and we can see that we've gained some level of replayability because every time we play the chair is in a different location now this is the basic idea behind procedural content generation and in this case we're simply procedurally altering the position of the chair in the room uh, within some constraints. Um, we, we always spawn the uh, chair with a location z coordinate of zero. If we were to vary the z coordinate, we would um, potentially have the chair hovering in the air or uh, below or in the floor or something like that. And because we only rotate the yaw of the chair, it isn't tipped over on its side or anything like that. 
Now, there is a uh, shortcoming uh, of this, the way we have it, and, and that comes into play when we start spawning multiple items. Now, it might not be completely obvious right away when we start spawning more than one of these, but um, I'll show you uh, that it can become uh, sort of complicated really quickly uh, when you spawn multiple items in the same area. So first of all, why don't we take our spawn item function and why don't we call it, say, uh, two or maybe even four times. And instead of placing these anywhere in the room from negative 500 to 500, uh, why don't we constrain our uh, X coordinate and Y coordinate to simply just 50 and negative 50, so that way they'll only be spawned at a random location within a very small area in the middle of the room. So what happens when we press play is, look at this, we have several chairs and they're occupying each other's space. Now this isn't normally a problem if you know they're spread out. Uh, say, let's put these parameters back from negative 500 to 500. You may not realize that this algorithm has a flaw because it's not very likely that two chairs will be spawned on top of each other. But the truth is, even if you have the uh, X coordinate and Y coordinate with a wide spread, you still have the chance that uh, one or more of these chairs could be spawned in the same location or relatively the same location as another and the odds will increase the more times you call this spawn item function. If you're calling it a whole bunch of times, then suddenly the odds of two chairs overlapping one another, such as right here, increase. So you have this problem uh, when it comes to spawning multiple items, and in the next video, we're going to show a way to, uh, to take care of this problem so that we can guarantee that no two items will ever overlap with one another in a procedural algorithm like this. So stay tuned, we'll see you in the next video.